Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and I am so happy to be with you here today. I actually did a blog post at SweetStamper.com today. I think it had been about mm, at least a week since I had posted. So um, I did a blog post today sharing a stamp set that I'm going to be sharing here with you uh, on Facebook Live as well. So we will give it just a minute to see who else is going to gather. Uh, today is Thursday, and so on Thursday, I do simple and stepped up stamping. And um, so we're going to go stamp, sink, and paper to start with. And then we're going to step it up a little bit with some fancy, fancy. So um, let's see if anybody's going to join me or if I'm going to be all by my lonesome as we kick off Thursday Facebook Live weekly Facebook Live. I trust I'm in the right place. It's not like there to be nobody at this point. Okay, let's see. But I am live and I am on my Sweet Stamper page. So, while people are gathering, I did want to let you know that um, if you will like my Facebook page here, um, as well as follow it, that really helps me with Facebook. Um, I have a lot more people that follow me than have actually liked the page. So um, that would be, oh, there are people here. The, the comments are not coming up in the phone. How interesting. You know, you just never know. With Facebook, you never know. I tell you, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with Facebook. <laughs> As I'm sure you do too, because I'm thinking, you know, it's not just those of us who are filming and stuff on here. I know that when we're just going through and trying to find things, sometimes it can be very frustrating. So, hey, Veronica is here and Diane and Jill. So, welcome, welcome. I am um, so happy to be here this at this time. On Tuesday, when I was with you for Teach Me Tuesday, we had roofers here um, coming. We were preparing for the roofers to be here. They were here all day yesterday. We actually fled the house for a while, took the dog and left for about four hours because, you know, the sound is just deafening when they're doing that. Hey, Linda and Gail, welcome, welcome. And Laura and Marlene, okay, we, we got our crew gathering. So I didn't know whether they would still be working today. And, and if that were the case, if I would have to bump my Facebook Live to evening. But thankfully, you know, it was only one guy that came to finish up some stuff this morning. And then another guy came later. Hey, Simone, I'm glad you're here. And they are done. They are done and dusted. I mean, they worked until it was dark last night. And there were quite a few guys out there. And um, they were knocking it out. So I'm hoping that we don't get another hailstorm with more uh, damage to our roof. If you... If you live in Texas, you're really familiar with hailstorms. I know they happen in other parts of the U.S. as well, but they wreak havoc on our roofs, and we had just replaced our roof a couple of years ago, so c'est la vie. Here we are. Let's get down into something that is much more exciting than replacing our roofs, and that is the stamp set that we're going to use today. Hey, Sue and Susan and Gerilyn. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's get down uh, the camera down this way so that we can see, um, hopefully, my stamping surface. Let's, let me just wait till the camera stops bobbing and hopefully, oh, not too, too bad. Let's come down a little farther. Okay, very good. So, Inspiring Iris. This is the stamp set that I'm using for my monthly card class. I do a an eight card class every month, and um, I just this is such a cool stamp set. It actually debuted in the spring catalog last year, and I was going to show you. Let me grab my catalog. Um, it's actually on page I think one eighteen in the annual. It's on page 118 in the, in the annual catalog, the big book. And you know, it's interesting because they don't even have a sample in here to show you what it looks like. So when you look at the opposite page, um, it's showing these stamp sets, but not this one at all. So I'm gonna help get you inspired. So Terry Lynn, you're at the VFW having a diet Pepsi with your 
boyfriend, your hubby. Aw, oh, I love that. Okay, well, yes, I'm going to share my world for sure. Out, out of the roof business and on to stamping. So I am going to do some simple stamping. I'm pulling out my uh, trusty uh, color combo from Stampin' Up, and I am going to go with this color combo right here for a bright, fresh, um, a bright and fresh design for spring. And I think what I love about this Iris stamp set, you know, the Iris is very, um, synonymous with spring. There are some other flowers here that you could use at other times of the year. And also the the different greetings can be used anytime. So I think there's a lot of versatility in this stamp set. It's only $21 and look at all the stamps you get. I'm gonna be doing something that is called um, two-step stamping. And uh, it's actually a process that's years ago and uh, they were the first ones to come up with it. Hey, Betty, I'm glad you're here. I think some others have, uh, have since gotten on that bandwagon, but it is a cool way to, um, to stamp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm starting with my Tuxedo Black Memento ink, and I'm going to start with the um, outline image for the um, irises. And I do have a little, um, piercing mat underneath me, foam pad. Uh, whenever you're using um, photopolymer stamps, that is definitely your best bet. And when you're using photopolymer stamps, you also want to hold your stamp in place for a couple of seconds to get a really good transfer of the ink. So this is a beautiful outline image of the um, irises. And if I wanted to, I could color that in with markers or with blends. I could color it in with watercolor pencils. I could do all kinds of pretty things. Yes, you're right, Marlene. It would be a very pretty Easter card. There aren't actually Easter greetings here, but there's Easter greetings and things like teeny tiny wishes. So now I'm going... Instead of doing a, uh, a coloring technique, which I could do very easily uh, with the things I just mentioned, I am going to instead pull out a piece of scrap paper. I probably should put it over here so it's on a solid surface. And I'm going to stamp off. And this is, this is the two-step part of two-step stamping. So this is going to fill in my irises. And if you notice on the stamp, there are little ridges there. And that's so that instead of just getting a solid application of ink, it's going to have like uh, an innate uh, watercolor look to it. So that is going to help my image look extra special with no effort on my part at all. So this is quick and it's easy. And that is always my gig. So I'm gonna stamp off here. That is Highland Heather. Even though it's Highland Heather, that's pretty dark. And I wanted to go with something a little bit lighter. You know what, I think there is a little thread or something on there. So let's get rid of that and let's try again. Um, the beautiful thing about this two-step stamping is you start with the dark image first, the outline, and then you come in with the lighter color and you see how that just lines up ever so nicely. And that is gonna give me a lighter shade of Highland Heather, which is gonna be perfect. Ugh, that's way too light for my irises. What happened? Let's go. Maybe, let's see, what happened? Maybe I didn't ink it up well when I got that thread off. Ah, that's better. I wanted something light, but not, you know, like so pale you couldn't see it. So that is my Highland Heather. And now I am going to add a bit of green. Now, this is the color scheme that I'm using today, but I need to bring a little bit of green in for my leaves. I don't want blue leaves. So I'm gonna bring in this hair pizzazz. And this is where these color combos really, really help you. So now I'm going to come in with the fill in for the, the leaves. And you know, iris leaves are kind of grassy looking. And although irises are predominantly purple, they do come in other colors. So you could do yellow irises, 
You could do some pink irises. There's some really pretty kind of magenta ones. And again, I'm stamping off before I stamp on, but this is really looking pale. I don't know if it's just the way I'm, ah, oh, there we go. That's what we need right up there. I may have to ink it again. I don't know why that seems so pale. Yeah, these are coming out really, really pale. Hmm. Well, let's try it again. Yeah, it is a good it is a good stamp to have in your collection, Simone. You're right. So there, I did do it twice, but it's super pale, and I do like the way that is looking now. I am going to set this aside and I'm going to pull in a piece of Highland Heather because this is going to go here. But before I do that, I'm going to take the flower image and I'm taking the, I don't know, make me a little garden here. And I'm going to do a little stamping all around the edges here. And that is going to give me a nice little background and I'm just going to go tone on tone and that is going to be more Highland Heather and you see how I'm rotating my stamp back and forth so that I don't get too much of you don't want to look real matchy matchy you want there to be some variation you don't want the flowers like butting up against each other you want some Kind of a good variation between leaf um, out, leaf outline and um, flower outline. So that is what I'm doing here. And you just go around and you random stamp. So let's go like that. Now, when I place my image there, look how that goes va ba boom. That really, really perks it up. So I am going to just pop this on here. So even though this is super simple stamping, I did want to add that extra layer. You know, you can take just stamps, ink, and paper. That's the way most of us start with just stamps, ink, and paper. And you can actually have a really nice card. And that's one of the reasons I like to do this uh, kind of simple, I don't always do just stamps, ink, and paper on my Thursday. But look how pretty that is. I did add that layer because I'm going to actually pop that up on dimensionals and give this a little bit more, um, a little bit more height. So let me go ahead and put this down and do that with grab some of these dimensionals right here. You know, adding this little panel makes such a difference. It gives a little bit of lift and it also puts a little bit of shadow behind this layer. And that ends up adding just a lot of uh, depth to your card. So yeah, I could do this as, this would make a beautiful Easter card. And this, this card that I'm doing today uses a lot of the stamps in the stamp set. And I think that if you like to stamp, this is a great stamp set for just, you know, just the act of stamping. It's just so cool. It's so fun. It's very therapeutic. And this, I'm actually going to lay flat. You see how I'm getting a little bit of a, um, of a shadow there? That's what I wanted. I wanted that to be a little bit of a frame. This, I'm going to just stick right down. So let me grab my seal. And pop this flat. Ay, ay, ay. I think I've got that in purple ink. Well, we're going to put a little greeting down there, so hopefully that will cover. So do as I say and not as I do. You know, when you have that ink over here and you put something down on top of that that's white, yeah, um, that is going to trip me up. So now I'm ready to just add a little greeting. Now remember, this is what the, uh, this is the color scheme that I'm using and I'm going to add just a little strip of pool party and that is what's going to do my greeting and I'm going to do wishing you the best. On the inside I could put happy Easter, I could put happy birthday, I could put any number of things. So um, I'm just going to 
but wishing you the best. Super, super simple. And I think I'm going to do it. Mm, let's see. Do I have a skinnier strip in here? I had, ah, yes. I have some one inch and some three quarter inch strips. I wanted kind of a skinny one here. Just a little bit of pool party. And for my simple version, I'm not gonna incorporate the Blackberry Bliss. I'm gonna do that. Well, you know what, I could. Let's see. Oh, I've already stuck that down, Never mind. Can I lift it really quick? Will it lift for me? Haha, -ha, look at there. You know what, let's go ahead and add this layer. I probably should. Ooh, look at that. That does dress it up considerably, doesn't it? Do we like the layer? Or do we like just the white? Hey, Crystal, I'm glad you're here. What do we think? Do we like that layer or do we like it with the white on the... Definitely makes it, um, definitely makes it uh, more dramatic. It gives that really strong um, um, frame underneath it. So there, I'm going to just add my greeting like so. I could do it straight or I could bring it over just a little bit. Hmm, I think I'm gonna do it like that. You like that Blackberry layer, Betty, okay, and Veronica does too, and oh, Yolanda's here. Okay, Sue, okay, Jennifer, okay, we got the layer it is. Well, thankfully, I already had adhesive on this, so I'm just gonna press that in. And you know, this is where I think sometimes, you know, you look at these colors and you think, is that, you know, I'm not sure I'd put those together, but Stampin' Up! says these are great colors. And I think the key with this color scheme is to use only a little bit of the Blackberry Bliss, not to use a ton of it. And then you have a really nice, um, then you have a really nice look. So that is going to go there. And then I'm just going to pop this up with a couple of dimensionals. And um, as you can see, I didn't, um, I didn't even make a flag on the, um, on the end of my greeting. Sometimes I like just to do that little slice. It's kind of a fun look. I do like that. Okay, so there's super simple, stamps, ink, and paper. That's all that is in this card, stamps, ink, and paper. I didn't use any punches, nothing. This is really, really simple stamping. Now, let's do the same card, but let's step it up a little bit. So, let's see. This time, I think we are going to actually use a, I'm gonna put this over here so we can see it. I think we're gonna try putting a Blackberry Bliss background uh, card base on here because I'm not gonna do the stamping like this. Instead, I'm going to bring in a piece of designer series paper. So that is all, this is how I'm stepping it up. Um, I'm using a different color card base and then I'm going to add some designer series paper. Now I am gonna do the same thing with my stamping, it's gonna be the same. So let me pull my Pull my little mat back over here. And let's start with our black ink. This is Memento ink, and that is a key because I'm actually going to bring in just a little bit of Stampin' Blends marker on this one, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. Now, I want to make sure that this dries. And although Memento dries very quickly, sometimes we get a little bit too ambitious. Ay, I'm getting little threads here somehow. And uh, we get in a little bit of a hurry. So I think what I'm gonna do is while that dries just a wee bit, I'm going to, oh, now that's, that's an idea too. I think that's gonna be a little bit too busy with my, um, with my iris. So I think it might overwhelm my iris. So instead of the, polka dots, we will do this kind of canvas look. I like that a lot. So you can see how we're stepping up by adding a piece of one of the collections. This is the Subtle Collection Designer Series paper. Um, I'm also going to try doing um, our greeting with a punch. So let's try 
stamping our greeting. And then let's see what happens if we use this double oval punch. I think this is on back order like big time. It is a phenomenal punch when it comes back in the warehouse. If you don't have this, I would highly recommend that you get it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually, I find that a lot of times with our punches, I just punch it out, especially with a photo polymer stamp, and then add the, add the stamp afterwards. So I think that's gonna be a better, because sometimes you don't get it just right on the right spot. And see, I've got such a thin piece of paper here that it really did need to be centered in order to, um, to be punched out correctly. You know, the other thing I like about this inspiring Iris stamp set is the greet, the font is really delicate and dainty. Uh, it reminds me of somebody who has really excellent penmanship. So that is going to be there. And so let's see if we like that, now you see? When I stamp, uh, punch that out, sometimes if you don't punch just right, you get a little bit of a shaggy end. So that's why I like to have an emery board handy. Okay, I don't need that anymore. Let's see if we are ready to stamp the iris. So once again, I am going to stamp off and let's just see if it comes out a little stronger this time or if I just didn't need to stamp off at all. But it did seem like it was really strong. Diana, I'm glad you like the colors. I think they're really beautiful too. And I, like I said, I would not have come up with this stamp, this uh, color scheme uh, on my own for sure. So there, and then that's gonna line up. Voila. Uh, see, it's coming out still really light, but see, I don't want it that dark. So that's something you can also think about doing sometimes is when you want something a little bit lighter is to stamp off, but do it twice. And with a photopolymer stamp, it's easy to do that because this over here is just a little bit too strong for the look that I'm wanting. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so let's do the same with the pear pizzazz, but I think I'm not gonna stamp that one off. I don't mind if the, if, the, um, if the green is a little bit stronger for those leaves. So here we go. And I think it's easiest if you take that one that's gonna go right up at the top, line that one up, then the others. And they do have that kind of watercolor look, so it's not like it needs to be exactly, I don't think it's designed to be exactly in the line, but it's gonna give you kind of a soft watercolor look. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna come back in and do just a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I am happy with that. You do see how much stronger this green is than when I stamped it off over here. So that does kind of show you the difference. I'm gonna also show you something else that um, I've heard some people that have trouble um, getting their stamp pads dry out, but you know what happens with these new pads? If you don't, you hear that pop? That is how you know this, this thing is closed. So yeah, you definitely want to do that. Um, do we still sell the base? Yes, we do still sell this base. I think it's called a foam mat. It used to be called a piercing mat. I think they changed the name because we don't really do much piercing anymore. You can see that this is an old one because it's got a lot of pierce marks in it. But I think it's called the foam mat and it should be, I think it's with the coloring tools. Okay, let's go ahead and put that on a little layer of Blackberry Bliss. Whoopsie. Dropping my stamped image. And let's see what else we can do to bring a little stepping up to our card to maybe bling it out a little bit, maybe do something a little bit more over the top, or just maybe not over the top, but just a little bit fancier. But I do think that this stamp set lends itself to simple stamping. Okay, now where's, here we go. Here's the card base. 
Now, you see how much more dramatic that looks with the, um, with the Blackberry Bliss both places. And now I can put this here. It's a little bit more finished looking, I think, with the punch. And I think that we will also add a little bit of shine. Oh, I know what we were gonna do. I almost forgot. I've already got this stuck down, but that's okay. Um, this is a this is something I really like to do with an outline image like this. This is the light pool party blend. So this is pool party in here, and I've attached this to the layer, but not to the card. And I'm just going to come in with this fat side, and I'm just going to do a little outline, and it's going to give the illusion of sky, and also just kind of make all the colors here pop. Now I'm using the, um, the flat side here um, because I don't want to um, blunt the tip and I certainly don't need to use a fine tip on this and I'm just going to kind of bring that down and you see what that does you see how that kind of really highlights the whole thing and uh, Diana yeah they do need bling you're right it is my calling card <laughs> I do like a little bling now, I could even just offset this instead of doing it straight. Um, that's another option that we have. So I'll see if anybody wants to weigh in on that. While I'm finding my bling, we'll make some choices on the bling. And I think I might, I'm going to try a little, just a simple bow of linen thread and see if, if that makes a nice... Um, a nice little touch or if it's unnecessary. You know, sometimes we get so excited about all of the embellishments on a card that we kind of overpower it. And I think with this in particular, this has really beautiful um, stamped images. I mean, this is an artist has drawn this. And so I, I think in my mind, it doesn't need a ton of embellishment, but just a little bit to, um, you want it to um, highlight what you're doing, but not overpower it. So I could put a little, yeah, I don't know that it needs that. Um, I could also wrap it around here. Let's just kind of play with this a little bit. Let's see, I could do a couple of pieces of twine around like that. I'm just going to Cut this off and see if we want to think about that. Um, we could add that little bit of earthiness to what we're doing. Uh, oh, I'm glad you like the shadowing with the pool party. That is one of my favorite things to do. It just adds such, it makes everything really, really pop out. So I've lost my feed on my computer. So let's just see if I can find you again to see what you're seeing. Again, Facebook is not being my friend today. Nothing new there. So I've brought a couple of different bling options here. These are kind of large, but they're cool. These are those, um, what's, what are they called? These are the um, droplets, epoxy droplets, and I chose the, um, the frosted ones. These are frosted epoxy droplets. So I could place a couple of these. I really like these are the um, faceted, um, elegant faceted. And this is, you know, there's an elegant look to, uh, to this, even though it's a simple card. So I could either use these petal pink, although I think I like the white ones. I think the white looks better. So I do like these white, uh, they're sticking to me, elegant faceted gems <laughs> that are, ay, 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 sticking all over, ay. Okay, or the other thing I could do is just a regular rhinestone, just that nice shine, that nice simple shine. It does have a silvery look, so it has a different shine than the white. Oh, now Jennifer's telling me I should use the opals, the opal rounds. I would have to get those off my other station. 
but that's a good idea. So I might just hop over there and grab that. Um, so we like the we like the twine around the bottom, and um, yeah, I do think that kind of adds a nice little. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to I'll show you my quick and easy way to do this. I'm just going to add two little bits of um, seal, and then I can stick my twine there and just. I think I might just do three straight lines, not even do it like twisted, but um, or like um, crisscrossed. I think I'm just going to do it in three straight lines, and just give a little bit of pearls would also be nice, Crystal. That's a nice idea as well. Now let's get this straight, so that when I put it down. Okay, that's coming along nicely. Now, because of this bulk and because just kind of the natural, you know, uh, coming together, I definitely want to put my focal piece up on dimensionals. See, on this one, I had my layer up on dimensionals. This one, my layer is flat. That designer paper is just flat. I don't want to put dimensionals on my um, twine because it's already, the uh, linen thread is already got some bulk to it. So this actually helps balance out that bulk. No need to hop. <laughs> You're funny, Jennifer. I said I would hop over to my other, my other workstation. Jennifer says I don't need to hop. I could just walk. Okay, let's see how, what we're thinking. Okay, I do think that we need to go straight because I put those straight lines on there with the twine. So I definitely don't want to, you know, turn it. So, um, oh, now you see I need to bring that up a little bit maybe. Mm, that's kind of nice. I could put it right on the twine. The, it's actually linen thread, but I kind of like it that way. Exercise, exactly. I do like that. Um, that's really coming together. It's a very different look, you know. I do like them both. Um, so we... Really, the only other thing we're going to do is settle on a little bit of um, a bling to finish it off. Hey, Jeanette, I'm so glad you're here. So this is why I think that Inspiring Iris is a little bit of a hidden treasure in the annual catalog. You know, sometimes we get so caught up with everything in the... In the um, in the seasonal books, you know, it's all, it's everything that's brand new and shiny. But um, I love to go back to that annual catalog, particularly when we have a lot of stuff on back order, and just see what else is available and uh, that I want to bring in to uh, this time of year. So there I have my simple and I have my stepped up. Now let's just go ahead and attach this and then. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a dimensional over here and then just a little bit of seal here. Because again, I've got this popped up on dimensionals and I don't want this to um, knock into that. So that will give it the right height so that it's popped up over here and flat here. Now, let's just see. Do I have my little tool over here? Yes, I do. Yay. Is this cockeyed? I think it's a little bit, yeah, I think it's a little bit crooked. Sometimes when I'm working upside down, I don't get it exactly straight. I think maybe because people are talking about pearls and opals, maybe let's just try these little white shiny guys. These are those elegant faceted. Let's just see if that brings just a little bit of elegance and shine without being too obtrusive. What do we think? What do we think about that? It does speak a lot of spring, Kay. You're right. I think that um, I'm thinking about next week doing the, a similar card, but bring the yellows in because the yellow irises um, would be fun. And um, when I was looking 
at this um, color scheme, I thought, well, if I wanted to add yellow irises, what, where would I go? And there's not a, there's no yellow here. So what I did was I went to the Blackberry Bliss card, and it has Daffodil Delight with it. So I might try doing uh, the same card with a different color scheme and seeing if that would be kind of a fun, um, a fun look. So what do we think? Is that enough or do I need a few more of these? I could add a few more down here to kind of fill that space just a bit. Let's see, I need one over here on the green. I kind of like them because they look like little raindrops coming down. Now, I, I didn't bring it over here. I would definitely put a white panel on the inside because of this Blackberry Bliss. But isn't that a, oh, you bought a new Take Your Pick tool. It is a cool tool, isn't it, Terry Lynn? You can do a lot with it. Um, now, I thought that the other little thing that we could do is we could do a little something something on these, on these envelopes. And I thought what I might do is just take one of the fun things with these two-step stamps is to just take the fill-in, not the outline, and then you get kind of a soft watercolor look. What do you guys think? I think that looks really nice. And you see how even over here on my scrap paper, how they look kind of uh, almost like, um, I don't know, kind of artsy, kind of, um, kind of Monet-ish. Um, so let's do that one here. And um, yeah, let's do the same thing on both. And these are gonna go in the mail. Okay, Simone, off to work you go. I hope that you are going with a smile on your face from stamping with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure I got that all the way. And that, you're not a big purple girl, Terry Lynn, but you like these. You see, this makes me happy. When I can take a color that is not somebody's favorite and make them like it, because I mean, these have a lot of purple. This one, I think, has probably more in the sense that Blackberry Bliss is such an inky purple. It, um, it's almost black, you know, it's so dark. But I'm really happy with these, and these are, Hey Kim, I'm glad you're here from Michigan. Thank you so much for sharing my video. So here is simple stamping and paper, nothing else on this. And I think it looks like a pretty flash card personally. And then, and this is something that beginners can do and you don't have to have a ton of supplies for this. Um, you know, I used a couple of colors of cardstock and actually these are both in the Subtles collection. So if you got the Subtles assorted pack, that would cover you with that. And then um, for our stepped up, we added some designer series paper. We added a different color card base. We added some twine and a punch and some gems. And yeah, we, we definitely uh, stepped it up. But I think they're both. I think they both have their, their charm and are both worthy. I would be very proud to send them both. So um, I will tell you, I'm, I am, you know, when I get a backlog, I get a, I get a real big backlog. So um, I am catching up for all of the cards that were to be mailed out during my seven day uh, extravaganza of Facebook Live. And uh, so these will go in the mail because the others are going in the mail today. I'm printing, um, I am printing um, labels, address labels, so that I can get these in the mail. Well, that is going to be it for me today. And oh, I'm so glad you have this set. It's such a pretty set. You can do so much with it. And um, I let me, let me grab my others really quick. Um, if you... They were handy, but they're not. 
if you are interested in my monthly card class that features this stamp set, if you already have it, you might want to get the PDF tutorial. I do a PDF tutorial. It's an eight card class and it's only $12 for the PDF. And then if you want to do the card kits and all the supplies with us, it's 35. And that is on my blog today at sweetstamper.com. So I am going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for being with me here today. Be sure to share my video today. That helps me so much. And right here on facebook.com slash sweetstamper, make sure you've liked my page. It helps me. And some of y'all follow, but you've never liked my page. So I, I didn't take that personally. I figured you just didn't realize that you hadn't. And uh, I will photograph these. I already have an inspiration sheet almost finished. I just didn't know what we were gonna add here. So um, I will finish up that inspiration sheet and share it. And I thank you so much. Um, I will be here on Tuesday for Teach Me Tuesday. And uh, in the meantime, have a great weekend. Take care and God bless.